keeping people awake uh, during seven time. <laughs> if you feel like sleeping and you, I mean, you really tired and you wish to continue to stay awake, pinch yourself. <laughs> if that doesn't work, pinch the one on your side. <laughs> By the way, of the comment that I want to be very short and kind of telegraphic. Um, we've heard enough about the situation in which we find ourselves in, all of us, we from Africa, from the United States, from any continent. In my opinion, we are not going only through an economic or financial crisis, we're going through a moral crisis resulting from what may be described as spiritual bankruptcy. We have lost the compass and no wonder we will continue to roam in that desert not only for 40 years, perhaps for more unless we wake up to the fact that in as much as we should not be judgmental, in as much as we continue to accuse the leaders of the world, every time we say you, remember we have three pointing to ourselves. Who brought those leaders to our world? Who brought the new Israeli government with Netanyahu on top? People like us. And therefore, we need to challenge the masses to believe that each and every one of us, each and every one of them, must not underestimate how much he can contribute towards bringing about the change we've been addressing. I remind people that the early disciples in the Christian faith, in any faith, were far less than the people present here, and they had no means whatsoever. Yes. They were bankrupt as far as finances, but they managed to change the course of human history. Yes. Equally true with other faith, early disciples. And today we speak of two billion Christians, we speak of one and a half billion Muslims, and then certainly the rest, Hindus and Buddhists and Chintus and Jews and, and you name I speak as a Christian. And I have witnessed some of the leaders, I'm sorry to say, lighting a candle on one of the Christmas trees in Bethlehem a few years ago. And the very same evening, showering Iraq with cruise missiles <coughs> after lighting on those cruise missiles, Merry Christmas. And another leader will not mention the name, sitting, addressing the nation with a Christmas tree behind and putting a rock on fire. Mm -hmm. My sisters and brothers, no wonder when I was asked one time to speak, I did say that we need to address the subject of the moral crisis in the leadership, not only the political leadership, but others, including the religious leadership. I dropped the line, in fact it was an open letter, calling on his volumes the Pope and the Archbishop of Canterbury and, and other church leaders because I thought I would address those whom I counted, these members of the faith tradition that I am one of which. I said, indicate that you're coming to Gaza, the war would have stopped on Gaza. I can't go in detail on what happened in Gaza, because all of you must have seen, must have seen. And many of the church leaders, and many other leaders, 
stood very much like the old Galileans who followed Jesus Christ to Jerusalem. Standing afar and watching. And this is true of many leaders and those who are led. Watching afar and doing nothing. What is it? What what is it that causes us pain in Palestine? And in Israel. The Palestinians and the Israelis, the Jews and the Arabs, in my opinion, to sum it up, the illegal Israeli occupation of those territories occupied in 1967. What is it that causes us pain in the, in the Middle East? The misuse and abuse of authority. When we speak of regimes, when we speak of leaders, not only those meeting here. No. The abuse of authority. What causes pain in the world of God is certainly the poor leadership. Where are those leaders who change the course of human history? 